G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are doing power rankings for round nine. I'm doing this a little bit earlier this week. If you've never seen one of these before, the idea of this, the premise is to try and rank teams partially based on form and almost trying to provide a little bit of a, a real ladder based on current form and, and factoring in things like who teams have played, particularly with a focus on the last five rounds. And I think this one has been the most difficult one of the entire season so far. And I've gone a little bit rogue with a couple of them. There's probably going to be a few outcomes in here that look a little bit tricky to justify. But I'm going to do my absolute best. We've got teams who didn't win that have moved up. We've got teams that had a great win over another good team that have either moved down or stayed the same. And my response to that, to preempt that, is that it's also a byproduct of other teams around the competition doing better than expected. Bear with me, this one's going to be a tricky one, but I am going to do my absolute best to justify it for you. So as we often do, we start from the bottom of these rankings and I will go with my bottom two now. This one might be contentious, but I have the bottom two teams switched around now. I've got Richmond in 18th spot on the form rankings and North Melbourne in 17. Why? Well, I mean, the form rankings, I do take a particular focus to the last five games, and we are increasingly removed from Richmond's good win over Sydney. And I do realize injuries are seriously curtailing Richmond at the moment. But at the same time, we, we kind of ignore injuries with power rankings, don't we? Otherwise, we'd have, you know, Richmond much higher. We probably have had various teams over the last few years higher than they should have been. You've got to focus on the actual performance. And Richmond's most recent performance shows that at, on current form, to me, I think North Melbourne are just going a little bit better and therefore they've moved up a spot without having won a game this year. We've got West Coast planted in the same spot as last week. They've lost three on the bounce and they had a couple of good wins before that um, and therefore are justifiably ahead of the bottom two teams, um, but have certainly been leapfrogged by Hawthorne. I'm pretty sure that was the case last week. So they're in the same position. The next two teams above that have flipped around. I've got Hawthorne leapfrogging St Kilda who are now into my bottom four in terms of my power rankings. And to justify that, well, they've lost four of their last five with one win over North Melbourne in that time. The team leapfrogging them is Hawthorne, who have won three of their last four, if I'm not mistaken. Wins over St Kilda, the Western Bulldogs, and North Melbourne. You can't ignore that form. And they also just beat the team they're leapfrogging. So I think that is justifiable to some extent. Hawthorne leapfrogs St Kilda up into uh, 14th. I still have faith in the Saints. Whether I'm right or not remains to be seen. But I do think they won't stay in the bottom four or finish bottom four this year. But I think that's fair on the form that we've seen so far. So then who do we have next? I've got the Gold Coast Suns moving up a spot. Yes, they've only beaten North Melbourne this current week, but you factor in as well St Kilda dropping off massively and out of the last five Gold Coast have won more games. The argument against Gold Coast is that their wins in the last five have been against West Coast, North Melbourne and Hawthorne teams all lower than them and I feel like respectfully that Hawthorne win was kind of before Hawthorne started playing well. So therefore I'm reluctant to have Gold Coast moving up too high but they certainly have moved up a little bit and justifiably stay ahead of Hawthorne because of that win over them. Now the next four again this is a tricky part of my power rankings to divide and unfortunately I've had to keep it the same as last week. So we've got Fremantle in ninth, then the Brisbane Lions in 10th, Adelaide in 11th and then the Western Bulldogs. Now the Western Bulldogs had a big win over Richmond. I can't weight that too heavily. You know, I don't think they've done enough to justifiably jump ahead of Adelaide and the Brisbane Lions who drew with each other this week. And again, that's the same ranking as I had it last week. I can't really move that around. They, they had a bloody draw this week. But out of the last five, the Bulldogs are two and three. Adelaide have only lost one game in their last five. They've had a draw and three wins over the, the Blues, North Melbourne, and the Power. And the Brisbane Lions in 10th have had a win over the Demons in their last five, a draw, and beat the Gold Coast Suns as well. So again, I find it hard to split Brisbane and Adelaide, and that has kind of been reinforced by the fact that they just drew at Adelaide Oval. Fremantle don't drop down my power rankings this week. Um, is that contentious? Maybe. I mean, for me, I think there's some mitigating factors around their performance against Sydney. I think they've certainly had an off night. I think statistically... The margin probably didn't reflect the fact that Fremantle weren't, you know, massively off Sydney. I think their end product was quite poor. Obviously, going through some stuff prior to the game with the tragic loss of Cam McCarthy, genuinely, how do you quantify that and factor it into this? In the end, I just decided that they've beaten the Brisbane Lions and they've beaten the Adelaide Crows earlier this season. And I know that was rounds one and three, I think. But that's the way I've decided. I don't think Fremantle moved down, but they're still in that ninth spot. Now, now we're into the top eight, and this is where I think I'm going to piss some people off. And, you know, if you compare it to last week, it might seem a little bit odd, but I decided it once again to sort of pull it all apart and throw it back in there. And therefore, you know, if you compare it to changes from last week, it might seem odd. 
but bear with me. So I've got GWS as the eighth ranked team on the current form. They've only won two of their last five against St Kilda and the Brisbane Lions, who do not rank highly in these power rankings. Their losses have been against the Blues, the Swans, and the Bombers, all teams ahead of them. Partially, this is also a product of some teams leapfrogging them, which we'll get to. Port Adelaide, I am so sorry. You've beaten Geelong at GMHBA, and I haven't moved you up my power rankings. They've won three of their last five with wins over the Cats, probably their best win of the season. They beat the Dockers and the Saints in their last five, and their two losses were against the Pies and the Crows. So a little bit of a mixed batch of form there. You know, the Crows loss wasn't good, but again, I will get to the teams above them, and there's some teams that have leapfrogged them, and you can let me know, you know, whether you think that is justified. This might be the most outrageous one of all. Carlton beat the Demons this week, and I have them sixth, which is down one spot from last week, and I have Melbourne in fifth, who also moved down one spot. Again, this is a product of other teams doing well. So let's talk about Carlton. The thing is that the reality is, in their last five games, which is not the entire crux of this video, but I do focus on the last five to get a form line. And Carlton's last five games haven't been great aside from the Demons win. They also had a good win over GWS. But GWS are now eighth in this power ranking. They lost to the Cats, they lost to the Crows, they lost to the Pies, okay? So when you compare that to some of the teams that I have ahead of them, I think it becomes increasingly justified, even if it looks weird that they've beaten Melbourne and haven't leapfrogged them. And I understand why that's a little bit contentious, but Melbourne's last five games have been a little bit better. They did lose to the Blues by one point. A week before that, they beat Geelong. So let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely kind of undecided about that one, but this is the way I've decided to do it. These are hard. So let's go through the top four. And I have two teams that are new into this top four that might seem a little contentious, but you know, in the past I've been criticized for not having them higher. I've got Collingwood and Essendon shooting up to third and fourth in my power rankings. Both of these sides are undefeated in their last five games with the only non-win, the draw they had with each other. So it's becoming increasingly difficult to not have these guys high in my power rankings and this is the week I decided to shift it. Collingwood are undefeated in their last six for a start. I know they only beat West Coast this week and this is why it might look a little bit bizarre. But those wins included a win over Port Adelaide and a win over Carlton and a draw with Essendon who are fourth. Essendon equally have now beaten the GWS Giants. Now that is probably the scalp they needed and that, that is a sentiment you'll see echoed across AFL media right now and I, I kind Kind of agree. I've been reluctant to put Essendon too high, but you look at the, the even in the last five, they're undefeated, but the fullness of their season, the only two losses they had were a loss against Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval and a loss against the Swans at the SCG in a game where I, I keep saying this, but I thought they played quite well and the margin probably didn't reflect how that game went. So Essendon really haven't done a lot wrong this year. You know, every team's had a day they'd like to forget. And I think for them, that was the power in Adelaide. They sit third on the ladder. So I think Essendon fans might be looking at this going, well, you've still got us lower than our actual ladder position. I understand that. And Carlton and Melbourne fans are probably looking at this going, what the hell? But I think that's a fair ranking to capture, you know, how well Essendon is going at the moment. And I still think Collingwood have been a little bit better. So then we've got our top two. And again, this wasn't simple for me because I mean, Sydney staying at number one, makes sense. They're undefeated in their last five. Their only loss this year was against Richmond, um, which is now not in their last five, but also a massive outlier. Geelong have dropped two on the bounce and don't move down my rankings. Is that contentious? Probably. But I don't think Collingwood and Essendon and Melbourne and Carlton have done enough to, to really leapfrog them just yet. Even though they're three and two in their last five, those losses have been very narrow losses to the Demons and Port Adelaide. So again, open to you know your criticisms and constructive feedback around that. Like, this is tricky, but I still probably don't have Geelong moving down. Um, and like I said, Sydney is a no-brainer. They're number one across a whole variety of stats. They're a fantastic team and the clear number one team of the competition right now. So let me know what you thought of these particular rankings, guys. This is the one I probably have the most trepidation about people's responses, um, but be specific about what, uh, what changes you would make. I am always open to your opinions. Look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.